The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the December 4th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question, but you're not, you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got nearly all the use indices trading at the downside. The one that is not is Russell 2000, up nearly three points. The Dow's off 162. S&P's down 45. NASDAQ down 285. Semi's off 93. Trend is down about nine points out there. Gold's off 46 bucks. Silver's down 98 cents. Lights recruit off 36 pennies. Natural gas off 14 cents. 30 year Treasury down 23 three ticks trading out at 117.14 what we're going to do here first is uh go back we didn't get a chance i didn't get a chance i spoke too slowly or what have you and take a look at that nine panel market update chart just simply because in one fell swoop it gives us a pretty decent feel as to what we're looking at what i mean by that we take a look at the equity markets up here i just have the es and the nq es is in the upper left the nq is in the upper right what you'll notice there is that the ES Mini right now is sitting at support or potential support. And that potential support is the center of that profile. That's at 45.56. At the same time it's sitting there, you've got the NQ sitting at the bottom of its daily profile. That, too, is at support. The reason we're taking a look at that is because when we do go look at those intraday, intraday time period charts, if we really are at a support level that's meaningful, we should see some type of intraday signals. Now, they may not form just yet. They could be forming over the course of the next hour or so, but that's something to pay attention to. So we're sitting there at support or at potential support levels. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar index, it's rallied all the way into resistance to the extent that the U.S. dollar index is having an impact on the equity markets. And when I say an impact, folks, it is not a it is not a close to even 100 percent inverse or directional correlation out there. But to the extent that it's going to have some type of impact, it certainly will in the case of metals out there. We know about that correlation. The one with regard to the equity markets is eh, somewhat suspect out there. But we can see that price is trading right up into resistance. That's at 103.76. Now, in the case of Goldilocks last night, as it opened up, it did quite a rally. If you were watching the intraday charts, such as the five minute, the 10 minute chart, you saw those TD nine count patterns form rather quickly. In fact, that was the top out there. But at the same time that those were providing topping signals, I know we're not looking at those just yet. We can look at those during the show. We're still just looking at that nine panel chart out there. But at the same time, the topping signals were forming on the intraday charts. The daily chart was attacking that one to one price projection. It did hit it. 21.52.60 was the exact price projection where price got up to was 21. 
151.52.30. Now what we have is we've got a key reversal bar. As long as price closes one tick in the opposite direction, that confirms a sell the D-point pattern. Now with regard to Goldilocks, it's also attempting to form a new profile. The bottom of that profile is 2023.20. I do not know if this profile is going to hold. It shifted a couple of times, but right now the profile is a profile. We use that information. We'll have confirmation of that when we get back together tomorrow. But 2023.20 is a level to be watching for support. Now, I would not expect gold to get down there if, in fact, the U.S. dollar index has topped out by hitting that level of resistance, the top of its profile. Silver, at the same time, pulling back, has attained the 1 to 1.272 A to B equals CD. This is a big old huge key reversal, bearish engulfing candle, and price is testing at the bottom of a new profile that is also attempting to form. Now, price right now is printing out at 20. A three twenty four eighty four. The actual bottom of that profile is twenty four eighty nine. Does four pennies make a difference? I'm not going to get get my tur my skirt up into a tizzy over four pennies out there, but you do want to watch the bottom of that profile. Light sweet crude is also at support. And support there is not a profile level of support. It happens to be a trend line level of support. Can that be a bottom? Sure, it's been a bottom in the past. It could be a bottom now. That's not to say that there's not some battles up ahead because there most certainly are. Those are at 75.75, 77.40, and then finally 78.23. Natural gas on Friday, we took a look at it. We said, okay, it's got a TD9 count bottom pattern. But I cautioned to get I believe I cautioned against getting into that trade because when we took a look at the seasonal pattern, November and December are just the worst performing months. And I think what we agreed to was let's just come back to natural gas in January and February out there. And that still remains the case. That's for sure. It's negating that TD9 count bottom pattern as we speak right now. How low can it go? It can go lower. If we take a look at 30-year Treasury, it's still at an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. That price projection, 120 and change out there. Price remains above the top of its daily profile. And that's at the 116.18 level. So things here still look bullish. So that's just kind of the overall scenario. Let's shift from here and start taking a look at some of those some of those other charts out there. And we'll stick with the equity future contract, at least through this first break. Let's begin by taking a look at the ES Mini. So we know that the ES Mini is at a potential level of support, being in the center of its bearish structure daily profile. What you'll notice here on this chart is the profiles are a tad different. And when I say a tad different, I'm referring to the center line. Here, the center line is pretty close to the center of that set of profiles. And that's at 4541. That becomes another area of potential support. And if price were to close below that, then we'd be looking at that 4509. So the two systems generate the same top and bottom profile levels. It's the center that's a bit off out there. We can see that price is trading below that green oscillator and change line. Again, that makes that 4556 level a very key area. We're at 4554. So again, we're back at support. While we're at support, do we see any kind of bottoming signals out here? Turns out that on the 30-minute time frame chart, it will go ahead and complete a TD9 count bottom in the next 17 minutes. It's already formed bar number nine. That suggests that we should at least begin to see some type of rally. That rally should take us up towards its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is currently printed at 45.71. With regard to the 15-minute chart, we don't have, we've got a Rhodes momentum indicator signal, no bullish reversal candle. That is the same for the 10-minute time frame chart. We do not have any kind of a bottoming pattern on a 60-minute TD9 count uh, pattern on the two-hour chart. Now, this bar here is going to complete at 12 noon. That will become bar number eight. That can be a bottom. The bottom can form on bar number eight. Now, with regard to this two-hour chart, if at 10 a.m., price is trading below, give you that number if price is trading below 45.8750 it'll complete that TD9 count bottom you can see on the five hour chart price is finding support at the bottom of its profile so we are getting some support that matches up to the daily ES mini chart we looked at on Stevie's black background charts we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, 
dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So during that last segment, we took a look at the U.S. dollar index. We noticed that price was trading right into resistance. That's the top of its uh, daily profile out there. Again, that number is the 103, 106, uh, 103.76 out there. Now, if we take a look at the uh, three primary currency pairs that make up the U.S. dollar index, 83% of it, you've got the euro, you've got the yen, and you've got the pound. As we take a look at the euro out here, what we'll see is that the euro is trading below Friday's low. So that's a bearish signal there. Didn't even get to Friday's high out there. That suggests that the euro wants to pull back further, at least on the daily time frame out there. So if the euro is going to get weaker, the U.S. dollar index would get stronger. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, for Peter, we're also going to go take a look at the intraday charts, 30-minute charts, that is, to see if there's some type of short-term signals out here. If we take a look at the U.S. dollar Japanese yen, it actually on Friday confirmed a A to B equals CD to the downside to take us to about 145 out there. If in fact, the U.S. dollar index moves lower, not the, I'm sorry, the U.S. Jap the Japanese yen moves lower out there, that will weaken the U.S. dollar index. Now, it's only a 13% weighting versus a 57% weighting inside of the euro. We take a look at the Great British Pound. It is pulled back. It does still have its TD9 count topping pattern out there. What price is doing is testing that green oscillator and change line. So if, in fact, the Great British Pound finds support here and it rallies, that will also put some weakness into the U.S. dollar index. So let's go take a look at those intraday charts. But the bigger picture here, it's a signaling to an IP to U.S. dollar. Japanese yen wants to move to 145. We're uncertain about the Great British Pound just yet because it's testing support. And the euro is suggesting it wants lower price as well. The euro top with a wave 7. That's a letter G top out there now let's go switch charts let's go look at the intraday charts right because when you're up at a resistance level such as the u.s dollar index for its um, daily time frame we like to see intraday time frame signals 
tell us that, well, you know what, that resistance, that support may hold. So when we take a look at the euro out here. The euro has formed wave number seven. Remember, we looked at the daily time frame chart. It topped with wave number seven. So most certainly that's something to pay attention to. Now, this will not confirm until the earliest would be 1130. And the only way that confirms is if we see a higher low. So as long as by 1130, less than 10 minutes from now, price closes above 1.0803, you'll have a wave seven pattern. Price should rally up towards its oscillator and change line. In the case of the yen right now, forget about any bottom signal here. What we have is we may get an A to B equals CD to the upside, at least intraday. And that's if we get a close above 147.11 out there. The last close on that last 30 minute bar was at uh, 147.10. So off just by a smidgen out there, but a smidgen is what's needed. Now, right now, we might be getting that signal here by 11.30 of an A to B equals CD to the upside. That would then say that the yen is weakening. The U.S. dollar index would be getting stronger. But the euro could uh, really assist here if, in fact, it does rally up towards that oscillator and change line. If we take a look at the Great British Pound, it simply has gotten back and has retested a prior swing point. That prior swing point was a wave seven bottom. That was back on November 30th out there. It's also testing an area that formed a TD9 count bottom. So we know that on the Great British Pound, price had made its way back to the oscillator and change line on the daily time frame. That is support. We're seeing some potential support here inside of the 30-minute time frame chart. So it's got the potential... It's got enough signals here to suggest that the U.S. dollar index, maybe for at least a while, minutes, hours out here, has at least formed some type of uh, top out there. And that's about the best that I can do for you, Peter, with regard to the currency pairs. I hope that that provided the information you were looking for. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We're going to close out this chart. Stevie's going to remember to change screens. And then we're going to go take a look at Occidental Petroleum. So I want to get through the request. And then we can get back to general markets and so forth. Uh, so let's get to Occidental Petroleum. Um, I'm just waiting here for my screen. So I did figure out my screen problem, but I didn't realize that I had actually changed the order of them. Um, I certainly didn't intentionally do that. Okay, so this was not the chart that we were headed for. Um, so sorry about that. We're going to come back to that chart. But right now, we're going to take a look at his Occidental Petroleum. This is for Alton. His first question is, where is the support and where to add? He's been in this trade for a long time. So where is support? Support is right here right now if, in fact, it's going to hold. And that comes from the weekly time frame, bottom of its bullish structured profile. So Alton, it's 58.06. Now, we have price that is testing a swing point. The swing point for Occidental Petroleum was week of June 23rd. The volume there was 53 million shares. It's way too early to determine volume out here. Right now, I can tell you on the daily base, we're at three and a half million shares. But just know that it's pulling back into a uh, swing point that's got volume of 53 million shares. Something to look at maybe on Thursday out there, Wednesday or Thursday. What we can say is that if price closes below 58.06, then it would be closing inside its swing point. It's only a daily close. But let's just assume it's going to be a close inside the swing point. And if so, then price would get down and test that low. Now, that low, the low from the swing point of June 23rd, is down at the 55.89 area. We take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here. We can see that price is trading below its green oscillator and change line. That tells us it's lost its momentum. It's trading below last week's, last month's low. We know that's a bearish signal. So its next level of support, that's assuming that 58.06 fails, the next level of support would be between 50.05 and 54.84. There's a bullish structured monthly profile. We do not have any kind of signal on the daily time frame out here. No kind of bottom signal is what I really should say. What do we have out here? That's really a great question. What do we have out here? We could throw in an A to B equals CD pattern, that's for sure. Let's see if the B point was passed with volume. The B point is what I would use here as bar number eight of this TD9 count bottom out here from October the 31st. The volume there was 5 million shares. When that was passed, it was passed with 13 million shares. So there's your confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside uh, for the daily time frame. I'm just going to move the A to B point over to the C leg out there. And just to try to give us some type of price projection area. So the one to one price projection level is around 57 and a quarter, somewhere around those lines out there. So you're asking for support and resistance. Well, I've given you really all the support levels uh, from the daily and the week or the monthly. I'm sorry, from the weekly and the monthly time frames. There is no daily support out here. Prices below all of that. Um, and resistance would be up at about 59.41. That's the current oscillator and change line. So 
I would sit tight. I know you want to add to your position, but I would sit tight here. Um, wait for a daily bottom signal. Hopefully, price then still holds that support level somehow, 5806 on the weekly time frame. Saul, thanks so much for writing in. Hope that helps you out. Nancy wanted to take a look at Apple. So let's run over, take a look at Apple, see what we see here. Apple trading right now below the bottom of its daily profile. I believe you were looking for a support level. Well, that first support level, Nancy, that we would give you at 188.29, it's being crushed. But we did see the NQ sitting back at a potential support level. We haven't looked at the intraday charts to determine whether or not Apple might be doing the same. If, in fact, now Apple does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top, and if we had two consecutive closes below 188.29, that tells us we head lower. Now, to head lower, what we do, Nancy, is we go take a look at that weekly time frame chart. The reason we look at the weekly is because we don't have a top out there. Price is above the top of its uh, daily uh, weekly profile. It's above its green oscillator and change line. That becomes your next potential level of support. And that level right now is printing out at 187.09. That number is going to shift by pennies. Or so. So use that as a guideline area. If price closes below that, then we're looking at a move back to 183.27. That would be the top of the weekly profile. We take a look at the monthly time frame chart. We just have a consolidation with inside its profile. The price right now is trading below that green oscillator and change line. So in summary, Nancy. Watch 188.29 at day's end. If price closes below that, it starts hinting at a further move lower. That further move lower, again, that weekly oscillator and change on at 187.08. It would be a close below that. That would say we head to 183 and change. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Com. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Goldilocks Silver, uh, the uh, GDX out here, each of them that have topping patterns, at least as of 1130. So in the case of Goldilocks, it made that one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. It's going to generate or should generate a key reversal bar uh, by day's end. Uh, it's, uh, right now, it's also a bearish engulfing candle. Do you need two uh, reversal signals? Uh, does that make it a more strong, uh, stronger top out there? The answer there is no. Uh, it is what it is. Now, what we can see here is price is trading also below that green oscillator and change line. And if price does close below 2040, 2046, I believe is the number. Let me give you the correct number. 2048.70. Price closes below that. Odds favor. It makes its way down to the bottom of that new profile. Now, again, this is a new profile that's attempting to form. That's at 2023.20. If it doesn't form, then the next level of support would be its breakout area, and that's down at 1979.30. I would say a close below 1979.30 would tell us we have a change in trend out there. The weekly time frame chart is one that could be concerning. It's only Monday. It's only 11.31. But what we have is it also completed the A to B equals CD pattern of the upside, and it could generate a bearish reversal candle. Could it's Monday? It's 11:30. We got to wait till Friday at 5 p.m. to determine whether or not we've got that bearish reversal candle. But we could get a sell the D point pattern on the weekly time frame as well. If we take a look at silver, silver attained more than its one to one A to B equals CD. In fact, it got up to 1.272 extension just beyond that late last night. And it has sold off. It has a bearish reversal candle. It's a big old bearish engulfing candle. Still, though, it is trying to form a new profile with 2489 uh, being a key level of support. If price closes below that, geez, where is silver going to head back to? I'd really have to do some retracement levels to try to figure that out. Its breakout area is at 2126. I'm sure that's a possibility. But that's not the one that I would give to you. We take a look at the GDX. The GDX looks like today is going to complete its sell the D point pattern. Why? Because price is gapped down. It's a bear separating candle. It's got that confirmation after that more than one to one A to B equals C to the upside. Now, the cool thing here is it is also attempting to form a new profile. Its level of support is down at 3046, and below that at 3030 is that green oscillator and change line. So would you sell the GDX if you were, or would you go short the GDX? I'd say, no, not just yet. You need more than this to take place out here. Got to, you know, we got the U.S. dollar index. It's made its way up to resistance. Uh, you've got uh, silver sitting out at potential support out here. You've got gold. Uh, you said support level would be that oscillator and change line. I don't know if I gave you that number. Let me give that to you for days in 2048 and a change out there. Uh, so we got to keep an eye on Goldilocks and how it's trading, uh, as well as U.S. dollar index, I believe, throughout the rest of the day to get some type of better handle. But what I can share with you is you got a daily top inside of uh, gold, daily top inside of silver, and a daily top inside of the GDX, unless there's some miraculous rally between now and the end of today's trading session. So that's what's going on there. At least that's just kind of the overview out here. What's going on in the general market? So I don't have any requests that I see that came in by phone. I don't believe I've got anything inside the Tiger's Den. So you're welcome to uh, put in a request and we'll get to it. In the meantime, what's going on inside the markets out here, right? Isn't that really the question? Isn't that why you really tuned in was to try to figure out here from Stevie, hey, what's really going on here? So that's a great question. What's going on? I'm going to try to answer that question for you by taking a look at our dance steps, right? We know that the market makes these wonderful dance steps. In fact, this set of charts out here, we're taking a look at each of the cash indices. When I say each, I should say the S&P, the Dow, the NASDAQ 100, and the Russell 2000. So the four core indices out here. And we've got daily, weekly, and monthly timeframes. As an example, on a monthly timeframe, sometimes people write in, they say, hey, Stevie, how'd you come up with that two and three step move um, as a, a potential timing signal out there? Well, I didn't really come up with it. It's the uh, chart that came up with that pattern. Just take a, here's the S&P 500. Here's a monthly time frame chart for the S&P 500 going back to uh, 2009, just before 2000, before the 2009 bottom. We came off of that bottom. We had second consecutive, second, seven consecutive monthly closes to the upside. 
That was telling us once you get beyond four, so you're working on five, that's telling you you've got some type of powerful change in trend out there. And when you typically get that bullish market, what you end up with is two bar, typically two bars, two or three bar knee jerk reaction moves to the downside. And it's really this chart here that shows us that. Now, when we did get that first significant pullback in 2011 inside of gold, inside, inside of the S&P 500, it did have five consecutive moves to the downside. It never took out the lows of that pattern out there. If it had, that would have been signaling to you and I were headed back towards that March of 09 lows. But instead, what we got are four and seven and five consecutive months moving to the upside. Now, let's take us back to where we're at. If we take us back to where we're at, we just finished a three bar move to the downside inside the S&P 500. We did that back in October. And obviously, we had a wonderful November. We should get, even if it's just a counter trend move, and I don't know that it is. The reason I don't know that it is because if we take a look at the last set of signals out here on a monthly basis, we got up to five consecutive months, and then a normal three consecutive month pullback. Now, that's a monthly time frame chart that we're looking at, but this should give you the understanding, a more clear understanding, because we've got less noise here as to that two bar, three bar knee jerk reaction highs and lows out here. And, and, and we did use, I think last week, there was somebody was looking to get into an instrument. We didn't really have great signals and we just went with the, I said the two bar pullback might be the place to go ahead and enter. Now, if we take a look at a weekly time frame chart out here for the S&P 500, we've just had five consecutive weeks to the upside. Now, when we pull this back here, we start pulling it back. How many times have we seen five consecutive weeks to the upside? Well, we've got one right here that took place back in August of uh, 2020. That led to a four bar move to the downside. We've got another one out here uh, that took place five bars back on November 5th. That was of 2021. Shoot, that led to basically nothing. It eventually got to a two bar pullback here on the weekly time frame. So what's this telling us? Shoot, it is actually telling us we should anticipate or expect it would be normal to see a two week pullback back out here and perhaps that's what we've started that's why it's important to be watching those support levels i'd say in the nq that first one at 15748 is a real key area out there now if we take a look at the daily time frame and again we're looking at the dance steps here this is the interesting thing we have not had a two bar a two bar knee jerk reaction low in the in the s&p 500 coming off that october 27th low out there that is a very strong market out there so if the nq holds support which it may do the yes many pulling back to that center of that bullish struck or bearish structured profile that could be an area of support out here this could just simply be a one day wonder but do we have in this one day something that's telling you and i would just take a look at those normal dance steps that we've got some type of change in trend out here uh, Stevie's, Stevie's eyes say, no way do we have that. That doesn't mean that might not be what's taking place, but we just take a look at normal price movement out there. We most certainly do not have that signal. Now, the NDX arguably has been the weaker of the uh, four out here. The Russell now is showing its uh, strength out there. It's showing its biceps. Here on the monthly basis with regard to the NDX 100, you can see we are also coming off a three-month pullback. Odds favor, we get at least a second month higher. We are in the favorable seasonal time frame for the equity markets out there. Here on the daily time frame look how strong this move has been it's had two two bar knee-jerk reaction lows so i'd say if the nq does close below 15748 tomorrow would probably be bar number two to the downside and then we go from there we'll be right back Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. To Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a ticker symbol here, AQ, AQST, and it's for Dan inside the uh, Tiger's Den. And when we take a look at AQST, we can see this thing has negated a TD9 count top on the daily time frame. It did that last Friday. It tells us about a strong bullish move. Today, price is taking on the resistance level, Dan, of the top of its weekly profile. So that's one of your battles. That's at 254. We can also see that price is targeting its weekly TD9 count top. That sets up another resistance level. So you got one at 254. And then you have one up at the 269 area. Now, price is trading at 260. That swing point, from a weekly standpoint, has volume of 4.5 million shares. So you want to watch that comes we come come week's end. If you did get a close above that swing point high, again, 269 with more than 4.48 million shares out there, you'd get a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside on a weekly time frame. Um, so everything looks good here except price is dealing with resistance. So in other words, it looks beautiful on the daily. That takes your eyes over to the weekly. We get to the weekly. We then see where the battles are at. Price has to overcome those battles to suggest what the daily chart is saying. Hey, I want to rally further out there. And the monthly time frame chart, its level of resistance happens to be the high from May 23rd. The reason that's resistance is because it fought, was followed with a bearish dark cloud cover candle, etc. Resistance at 269 as well. So it's 269. That's going to really be the number, Dan. Uh, you've hit it right now. You got up to 264, I believe. Uh, so that's just simply the level to be watching. Everything looks looks good, but you're all up at resistance when we come to weekly and the monthly time frame. So I hope that helps you out with regard to AQST, and thanks so much for the request. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How was your weekend? It was very good. How was yours, Steve? I was excellent. I really enjoyed it. Got in a little bit of uh, golf. Um, and uh, went down to Miami last night, checked out a new restaurant. So it was not too bad. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, Pfizer, I believe, is what you are calling about. Is that correct? That is correct, Steve. I bought into this on Friday. Okay. There was somebody that had called into Larry's show, and I, I think it was Mike, I believe. I didn't. You know, I kind of came in partway to it. And, uh, you know, I like to try to find stocks that are pretty beaten down at their bottom. So. For me, this one is relatively easy. I got in at a good price. I'm in very close to the lows, and so that's going to be my stop. And I, I guess really what I was hoping you could take a look at is 
I assume there's going to be plenty of levels of resistance to the upside. If you could identify those, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Happy to do that. And the first level is where price is trading into right now. And that would be the center of its bullish structure daily profile. And that number is 29.43. We're trading at 29.46. What I would say is that if price can close above the 29.43 uh, level, you know, I don't know whether that's 45 or 46 or 47, the higher above it, the better. Then when you do typically close above the center of a bullish structure daily profile or a bullish structure profile, Brent, you typically go up and you uh, test the resistance area. So that's the next number. And that would be up at 3017. You can also, my system's drawn in a trend line from the most recent uh, swing high out here on the trading day of November the uh, 3rd out there. Uh, is it November? Uh, November. I'm sorry, November 6th. And then it's using for its next touch point, the high of November 27th. I throw that in there as another resistance point, assuming that price can take out that 3017 level. If price is able to take those areas out, then the next area of resistance would be up at 3265. And 3260, well, take that back. 3019 is the bottom of its weekly profile. So that's another number that you have to watch. So you've got a pretty strong resistance, it looks like, at the descending trend line, the top of its daily profile, the bottom of the weekly profile. So I'd say the real big battle is going to be there at that 3019-ish area. And if price can close above that, um, then you could be looking to move to 3265. On a monthly basis, you do have a completed TD9 count bottom. So uh, you don't have anything on the weekly chart. The weekly chart could confirm a Rogeman indicator bottom this week. It will do that if it generates a bullish reversal candle. So those are the numbers today. Uh, those are the numbers that I've got right now. What questions or what additional information, Brent, can I assist you with here on Pfizer? PFE is a ticker symbol, folks. That's what I was looking for, Steve, as, as usual, just, you know, very thorough and okay. pretty much hit all the, everything I was looking for. Excellent. All right. Well, congrats uh, uh, on this uh, trade at this stage of the game. You've got this uh, nailed, and I hope that it uh, continues to rally for you up into that $30. Well, heck, I hope it uh, rallies up into $44 for you. That would be the center of its <laughs> monthly profile. But well, thanks we, we, for your we, generosity, Steve. I hey, you bet. I wish, I wish I could control <laughs> the markets. I can't. All I can do is read the charts. But, uh, hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Always good to speak to you, and we'll look forward to speaking to you again. That sounds great, Steve. Have yourself a wonderful day and, and uh, rest of the week. I'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. That was Brent in Martinez, California. The next question that came in, we're going to change screens here. Well, actually, I won't change screens just yet. I'm going to go over to the indice charts. It's from Peter in Park City. Peter's saying, you got, you got a bunch of snow up there? Um, I'm not able to easily read the threads or what have you. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to do, we're going to take a look at New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator. But what we first want to do before I go ahead and change screens out here is take a look at the New York Stock Exchange because the two are associated with each other. So when we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, you'll see a negated TD9 count top. That was negated on Thursday. Friday, we had a nice rally out there as well. And what we do have is prices testing a swing point, I believe. So let's see if we've gotten all the way up there. And that's a swing point from July 27th. So the low on that was 16.254, and the high today is 16.272. So 16.270. So so far we've got a test and rejection of that uh, swing point, but no other top. But there is that A to B equals CD pattern. So what you'd really like to see here, Peter, um, when I go to the next chart, what you'd really like to see here is some type of confirmed top. Now, getting back to a prior level, a prior swing point of rejecting it can be a top. My preference would be a bearish reversal candle to confirm a sell the D point pattern. So why is Stevie going through all that gibberish out there when all that Peter asked about was the uh, New York Stock Exchange Advanced Client Oscillator? And the reason is, as we switch over to those charts, give me a moment, you'll see the black background charts pop up on your uh, screen out there. And what you'll see here is up at the top is price. And what we can see is we've had rising price ever since the New York Stock Exchange Advanced Klein Oscillator made its high, its most recent high, on the trading day of November 3rd. And when it did that, that reading was 274. When you get above plus 150, you are in overbought territory. Now, we have been chatting with you about how these conditions typically work themselves off. And they typically work themselves off with a series of higher lows, which we still have in place in the advanced client oscillator. But then we also typically get a 
signal, a confirmed top signal inside the New York Stock Exchange to suggest that we're headed lower. And if we ever get that uh, spot volatility X to get above its 50-day exponential moving average, the 50 days at 1517, that is when things would get rocking and rolling to the downside. We don't have that just yet. We have market conditions where price is trying to work off that overbought uh, uh, condition out there. Um, if price did pull back in the New York Stock Exchange because it has tested, and so far it has rejected the bottom of that, uh, I think it was July 27th swing point out there, then that could tell us that price is pulling back to its oscillator and change line, Peter. That's the New York Stock Exchange we're talking about. And that level to watch would be 15.994. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. We still got a mixed bag out here. You've got the Dow up 134, S&P's down 35, Nasdaq 100, 218 to the downside. Russell 2000 is up 10 points. Uh, so far in the trading session, price has held those support levels that we were looking at as we began the show. Inside the uh, SMINI, that number was 45.56. Inside the NQ, that number was 15.748. U.S. dollar index has held resistance. That number's up at 103.76 out there. Uh, silver holding support at 24.89. Let's go take a look at the KRE, the regional banking. This is for Vicky, regional banking sector for Vicky. And Vicky, it looks still very good to Stevie out here. You've got an A to B equals CD to the upside. That would require a bearish reversal candle. 
to confirm a sell to D point pattern uh, price should target 4848. We're trading above Friday's high. That is a bullish signal on a weekly basis. Price closed just above a TD nine count breakdown resistance level last week. We're trading above that area at 4738. This is signaling to move up to 4957. So we got 4848 and 4957, and the monthly chart is in uh, agreement with that as prices trade above profile and it's also during change line. So that looks good. Stay with the KRE, the regional banking sector. If we take a look at your next request, which was uh, Roberto Coin, C-O-I-N is a ticker symbol out here. That's got a negated TD9 count top. And when we take a look at it, the only issue with regard to Coin is going to be its monthly time frame. And that's at the end of December. And end of December, it will complete a TD9 count top. We don't have any kind of topping signal on the weekly time frame. In fact, today was a gap to the upside. So this is just we're trading above profile without any kind of topping pattern. Now, there is an A to B equals CD pattern out here. And so if you were to see a bearish reversal candle, that could or should identify a top. Lastly, I had a request from Joe to take a look at Bitcoin out here. Let's put up the Bitcoin charts and uh, give me a moment. We'll get to that. I'm looking at the December futures contract out here of course i'd like you to look at it too there we go so here's our multi-set of time frame charts now with regard to the weekly time frame for bitcoin where are we at you've got a negated td9 count top but you do have wave number seven that can only be confirmed next friday out there daily time frame you've gapped to the upside you've got a rose momentum indicator signal watch for a bearish reversal candle there the monthly chart looks very bullish the intraday charts the 30 minutes got a top Watch 411, 41, 115 as an area of support. A top on the 60 minute, a top on the 120, a top on the 240, a top on the five hour chart. I'd say be careful. Hey, folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. See you tomorrow on Terrific Tuesday.